so this is the brand new motherboard from MSI and it is called the MPG B850i Edge Ti Wi-Fi motherboard. That is a very long name but as per usual guys we'll check its physical overview, test its features and more. We'll tell you everything you need to know coming up. Hey what's up guys this is Mac and we do a lot of tech related videos like this one if this is your first time consider subscribing. With that said let's begin. So what do we get inside the box? The motherboard itself obviously, the easy Wi-Fi antenna, M.2 screws, 1 to 3 easy connection cable, easy front panel connectors, a right angle SATA cable, a RGB extension cable, and some documentations and stickers. Now let's check out the physical design along with the features and connectivity. The overall design features a sleek combination of silver and white color scheme, highlighted by an eye-catching heatsink and the iconic MSI Dragon logo. We also get an M.2 shield frozer to protect the M.2 drive. This is paired with the high quality thermal pads and additional choke thermal pads. These features help maintain a stable performance. The frozer heatsink is engineered with MSI's patented fan design and durable double ball bearings, delivering top tier thermal performance tailored for gamer enthusiasts. This motherboard supports AMD Ryzen 9K, 8K, and 7K series CPUs. For this build, we will be pairing it with the Ryzen 7 9700X, which we will install in a bit later. It also features an advanced 8 plus 2 plus 1 phase VRM power design ensuring stable and efficient power delivery to your CPU, integrated graphics, and system components. Speaking of power, here's our 24-pin power connector. And over here, we also need a single 8-pin CPU connector. We also got two SATA ports, an ARGB connector for your RGB lighting in your build, and the front panel connector is located over here. Although plugging the front panel connectors might seem tricky, there's no need to worry since we have this easy front panel connector. Just plug that in and you are all set. For fan headers, we have three options. One over here and another one over here for PWM fans. And a third one is the MSI Combo Fan Header. It is a versatile connector that can function as either pump or fan header. It automatically detects whether it is connected to a pump or PWM fan. And its distinctive grey color makes it easy to identify. This section includes the audio header, USB headers, and lastly the Type-E connector and that's about it. Moving on to the memory, this motherboard features two DDR DIMM slots in dual channel configuration, each with single-sided locking latch. We also have two M.2 slots. The front slot supports the PCIe 5.0, while the rear supports the PCIe 4.0. As for this PCIe over here, we have a Lightning Gen 5 slot capable of speeds up to 128 gigabits per second. It is also reinforced with heavy-duty soldered connections to support large and high-performance GPUs. Now let's check out the I.O. ports. The most obvious thing that you'll notice is that it has a pre-installed I.O. shield, which is a nice touch that makes installation much easier. So starting from the top, you'll see two unique buttons, one for BIOS flashback and the other is for clearing CMOS. If you're not familiar with these buttons, we'll explain their functions in a bit but for now let's focus on the available ports. So we have an HDMI 2.1 that supports 4K 120Hz, 2x 5 gigabit per second USB A ports, 2x 10 gigabit USB A ports. We also have a USB C port that supports 20 gigabits per second, then another 10 gigabits per second USB A port, 5G LAN port, Wi Fi antenna input that supports Wi Fi 7, audio connectors with Audio Boost 5. I guess that's all for the IO ports. So, before we discuss the available features in the BIOS, let's talk about the easy DIY real quick. Part of it are these buttons we saw earlier. First, the flash buys button. 
This is for updating your motherboard's BIOS without any display or any other PC parts besides your PSU. So if your motherboard needs BIOS update, you will be using this button accordingly. We won't cover the process in this video as it would require an entire video on its own. The next button is for clearing CMOS. Pressing it will reset the BIOS settings to their factory defaults. In the ancient time, clearing CMOS required removing the CMOS battery and waiting several minutes for the settings to reset. However, with this motherboard, a single press of a button is all it takes. One important note is to make sure that your PC is completely powered off before using this clear CMOS button. Another part of the easy DIY is the easy debug LED. These onboard LEDs will indicate the source of the problem so you know exactly where to look to get your PC back up and running again. If you have no idea what this is, you should check out our dedicated video on this topic at the top right side corner of your screen. Though most motherboards have this feature, they don't have this easy memory detection LED. This LED lights up when it detects faulty memory in the RAM slots, eliminating guesswork from troubleshooting. Now let's talk about the BIOS. There is an easy mode and advanced mode. While overclocking can be overly complex for some, MSI Click BIOS X made it more accessible with multiple one-click overclock features for both the processor and memory, allowing users to easily enhance system performance without delving into intricate settings. There are a bunch of things that you can do with this motherboard to boost your PC's performance. Whether it's for work or gaming, it can really make a difference in how your system runs, so here's what we're going to do. First, we'll run some benchmarks using the default BIOS settings. Then we'll try out the one-click overclocking option, which is Game Boost Plus Preset XMP. After that, I'll show you my go-to PBO setup plus XMP, which will walk you through after showing you the benchmark results, just in case you're interested. So let's see which one comes out on the top. The optimized default settings, the Game Boost Plus preset XMP, or my personal PBO setup plus XMP. Now let me show you the setup we'll be using for this benchmark. As you can see, we're running everything on an open bench. For the main parts, we are using the Ryzen 7 9700X paired with the MSI RTX 5060 8GB gaming OC that we reviewed in the last video. And you can check that out at the top right side corner of your screen if you want to watch that later. Cooling the CPU is the MAG Core Liquid i240AIO. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to connect the RGB lighting since the RGB header is a bit too far from the pump header and we don't have any extension for it. Anyway, the cooler still works perfectly fine, we're just missing some flashy lights. I'll go ahead and display the full specs on your screen so you can see exactly what we're working with for this benchmark. We are going to run everything in 1080p with NVIDIA Reflex, DLSS set to balance with 2x frame generation with mostly high and ultra graphics settings. So, let's begin. So we tested those settings with Cyberpunk 2077 and the optimized defaults we got an average of 331 FPS and the 1% lows deep to 65 FPS and in worst case smoothness, you might feel some stuttering with those numbers. If you notice, the CPU temps is the highest compared to the other two settings. After turning on the Game Boost and XMP preset to Profile 1, we got an average of 148 FPS and the 1% low dipped to 59 FPS but worst case smoothness is much better than the optimized default settings. Now for my go-to PBO setting and XMP, we have an average of 147 FPS and the 1% low deep to 58 FPS. Though it is lower than the two settings, it has the best worst case smoothness and has 17% lower temps compared to the other two settings. In Monster Hunter Wild's optimized defaults, we have an average of 153 FPS and the 1% lows to 39 FPS with temps going up to 78C. 
For Game Boost plus XMP, we have an average of 165 FPS and the 1% lows to 55 FPS with the same CPU temps as the optimized defaults. For my go-to PBO setting plus XMP, we have an average of 155 FPS, the 1% lows to 46 FPS and has around 13% lower temps than the other two settings. Now in Black Myth Wukong, we almost have the same average FPS for all settings around 110 FPS and almost the same 1% lows around 94 to 96 FPS and the obvious difference is the 0.1 lows. Optimized defaults has 35 FPS, Game Boost plus XMP has 64 FPS and my go-to PBO setting plus XMP has 67 FPS with the lowest temp compared to both. Now for the Superstition benchmark, here are the scores. For some reason, the optimized defaults wins this round. Just pause the video if you want to take a closer look. And for our last gaming benchmark, Hogwarts Legacy's average FPS in optimized defaults is 126 FPS, with 47 FPS in 1% low and the most stable 0.1% low. Now, with Game Boost plus XMP, we got an average of 211 FPS, 32 FPS in 1% low, and 25 FPS in 0.1 low. Finally, in my go-to PBO plus XMP, we have an average of 203 FPS, 28 FPS on 1% low, and a terrible 12 FPS on 0.1 low. And I guess that's about it for our benchmarks. Before we move on to the conclusion, let me teach you how to do my go-to PBO setup plus XMP. You can skip ahead if you're not interested. But if you do a lot of rendering and light gaming, you should do this in your BIOS. First, let's do the RAM XMP. Now go to the advanced menu and click overclocking. Then the XMP drop down menu, choose profile 1. Now for our PBO setup, go to advanced CPU config, AMD overclocking. Then in the drop down menu of the precision boost overdrive, choose advanced. Then set the PBO limits to disable. What this does is instead of raising the power limit to the current limit values of the CPU as it normally does in Precision Boost Overdrive, selecting Disabled here forces the stock power profile of the processor. Then I start making adjustment choosing Curve Optimizer and select All Cores. Then in Curve Optimizer Sign, select Negative, indicating that we want to lower the voltage frequency curve. Then I entered a magnitude of 25. I started at 20 and increased the value by 1 until I reached 25. I also tested 26, but I found out that 25 was the most stable setting for this setup. Well, I hope that this helps some of you. Now let's move into the conclusion and let's talk about the things that I don't approve and the things that I love about this motherboard. As for the physical design, my only real complaint is the placement of the front panel connectors. Even with the easy connector, it still makes me wonder why did they choose to put that there. Unless the intention is to use a PCIe riser extension. Another concern is the sharp edges of the M.2 heatsink. If your GPU doesn't have metal backplate, there is a risk of getting it scratched or damaged. MSI should have gone with round edges in this area. Well, other than this too, everything else is awesome. First of all, I love the color scheme. Perfect for my white setup. If this gets paired with a nice ITX PC case, it's going to look absolutely stunning. The inclusion of Lightning Gen 5 PCIe is also a great feature for future upgrades, especially for users looking to get the most out of the next gen GPUs and storage. Another one is having two M.2 slots on an ITX motherboard is nice, since it offers flexibility for storage upgrades without sacrificing space or needing additional adapters. I also love the 5G Ethernet and the Wi-Fi 7 providing a blazing fast network connectivity. Whether you're gaming, streaming, or transferring large files, you are covered on both wired and wireless. And one of my favorites is the BIOS setup. 
It is clean, intuitive, and user-friendly. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced user, the layout and functionality make it easy to tweak the settings and optimize your build. The Click BIOS features offers tons of customization, where I wish I had more time to test them all out. Unfortunately, time is limited and I need to wrap this up to get the video out. But overall, this motherboard gets a big thumbs up from me. Anyway, this will be available in all MSI marketplace by the time you're watching this video. So if you want to get one for yourself today, make sure you check out the links in the description below or the affiliate link on your screen. So that's it guys, this is Mac, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.